Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to talk about initial change equilibrium or ICE tables. We're going to recap how we calculate the equilibrium constant, KEQ. We're then going to introduce this concept of an initial change equilibrium or ICE table as a tool or a strategy that we can use to help us solve problems and perform calculations to do with equilibrium. We're then going to look at how to construct an ICE table. And then we're going to ha have a look at some examples of how we might use an ice table. So in order to calculate this equilibrium constant, we talked about um, the equilibrium expression, that is this relationship or the, the maths kind of formula that helps us to relate the concentrations of all the species in an equilibrium, the reactants and products. We recognize that the ratio of the concentrations at equilibrium is a constant that we call the equilibrium constant or KEQ which comes in different types or flavours depending on the type of equilibrium we're talking about. So for example, for the following equation where we've got uh, nitric oxide and oxygen reacting to form nitrogen dioxide, that we would calculate the equilibrium constant using um, this expression, or NO2 squared over NO squared times O2. Um, so where we've got products over reactants, remember that we've talked about pork, um, products over reactants equals K, and that the stoichiometry or the mole ratio within those um, of the species in that equilibrium is the thing that you need to be careful of here. Um, um, you know, in your the indexes that we use. And remember that we're talking about equilibrium concentrations, not initial concentrations. And this last point is is what the what we're really going to be addressing when we introduce this ice table. So this is an ice table or an initial change equilibrium table. Um, now it's a, the, the same sort of concept as a before change after or BCA table that we've used before in looking at moles in chemical reactions. Okay, so we're, this is kind of how we set one up. We've got um, a column over here that lists our initial change and equilibrium or you know, as we get used to it you just put an I, C and an E. We're going to put our chemical equation over here and we're going to have some columns underneath, um, one column underneath each of the substances in our chemical equation. So if we've got two reactants and one product, we'll have three columns. If you've got one reactant, one product, two columns, four columns for you know two of each, etc. Okay, you get that idea. Um, the idea is that we're going to use this table to help us to organize um, where we, when we uh, make calculations to do with equilibrium concentrations, we're going to put our data in these spaces here. Okay, so let's look at an example here where we've got um, the reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen to make ammonia. And we're starting with um, 0.1 moles per litre of nitrogen, 0.5 moles per litre of hydrogen, and wanting to look at how we can actually, um, uh, and um, yeah, wanting. To, to look at how we can actually translate from that across to an equilibrium concentration. Okay, so in this situation that we know that the concentration of ammonia, th this is an example I've just come up with, but I'm telling you that this, this piece of information, how much ammonia we have at equilibrium, is the, is the thing that we've been able to measure. And so then we can use that information to help us fill in the rest. We know that all right, we've got, we must have zero product initially in, in the conditions we've set doesn't have to be zero for an equilibrium, but it, it will be in this case, but then it's gone up by 0.1 moles per litre in order for us to reach that value. And so then um, what we look at is this change line. So one of the things that you would remember is that reactants decrease in concentration and products increase. So this line, so you notice the minuses and the plus, uh, is very deliberate here. So we can use our, rate, our mole ratio to be able to identify that say, all right, well, for every one, you know, for every two moles of ammonia we produce, we only used up one mole of nitrogen. If we've created 0.1 moles per litre of concentration here, then we've only reduced by 0.05. Um, but then likewise, that then we use up the hydrogen at three times the amount. So we multiply by three to get this change value. And then we fill, fill down the columns to, to get the data that we don't have to recognise that at equilibrium, these are our concentrations. Okay, and then we've been able to see that we, we can use our equilibrium expression to then calculate K if we need to um, based on this data using the right stoichiometry. Okay, so we've used this table to help keep track of the changes that have occurred based on specific amounts that we've known about. Um, what we'll see in another kind of example is 
um, that we can use algebra to help us to fill in unknowns. If we don't know how much it's gone up or down by, we can put in x's, for example, to help us keep track of that. Okay, um, so now that we have our equilibrium concentrations, we can perform our calculations. So how do we construct one? First up, we draw up that table structure like you've just seen. Three rows for initial change in equilibrium with the equation written at the top, taking care to check our stoichiometry because we're going to need that for our equilibrium expression. Use those coefficients to calculate the moles of all the substances and then using the volume of the container to, to convert those to concentrations if needed. Now, you depending on the data that you have, you may not need to um, perform to, you may already have the values in terms of concentrations. But remember, if you don't, we need to be using the available data to help get um, it in that format, doing moles divided by volume to get moles per litre. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. So we've got 0.2 moles of hydrogen, 0.3 moles of iodine allowed to react in a one litre container to form HI. So we've got moles and we've got volume, but because we're talking about one litre, that's going to make our life easier in terms of looking at concentrations. We have our equation, one, um, one mole of hydrogen one plus one mole of iodine forms two moles of hydrogen iodide. So at equilibrium, the container was determined to contain 0 0.250 moles of HI. So now that's going to allow us um, to calculate the you know, K for this reaction um, using an ice table to help us. So we put in our initial values. We know that we don't have, or you know, we've been suggested we don't have any HI. Um, and so this is where we were talking about the, this idea of the algebra helps us here. We can say, all right, well, um, hydrogen and iodine both decrease by some amount. Let's call it X. Um, but then based on the mole ratio that I know that if this has gone down by X, that this, the HI must have gone up by 2X because it produces twice as much. And so then we can write an expression for how much we have at equilibrium in saying 0.2 minus X, 0.3 minus X and 2X. But if we ha have a look at the information from the question, we know that at equilibrium that we have 0 0.250 moles of HI. That is, that must represent 2X. So therefore X is equal to 0.125 and we can now fill in the data in our equation. We can recognize how much we'd have at equilibrium for our other two substances. And so now we've got equilibrium concentrations which is not the final answer we're looking for, but it helps us to do the last calculation. So we can write out our equilibrium expression, substitute in our concentration values, because remember we were dealing with a one litre container that the values that we have are the same as um, the concentrations. We perform our calculation and we get a K of 19.0. Let's have another look at a, a, a different example. Okay, so let's consider this particular example. Carbon dioxide and hydrogen reacting to form carbon monoxide and water. The K value is provided, 0.64. So at equilibrium, we've got roughly equal amounts of both um, reactants and products. So if we start with 0.1 moles per litre concentration of both CO2 and H2, what's the equilibrium concentration of CO? Okay, so we've got an initial concentration value. We're looking for equilibrium concentration of CO. Okay, so we set up an ice table. Okay, so we have four columns because we've got four substances. We've got the initial concentrations and um, of both our reactants and products. We're saying, all right, well, these, um, the, our, both our reactants will decrease by some amount X, and that's the same as the amount that our products will go up. So our equilibrium concentration is 0.1 minus X for both of these, and then it's X for both of our products. Now this X value to, is the one to keep track of because it's the amount we're actually looking for in our final answer. So we're going to need to solve for X to help get the answer we're after. So now we're going to do, we've got our, some information we can now do to our calculations. We have our equilibrium expression because we have mole ratios of one. There's no squares or cubes to talk about, um, but we've, we can construct it like this. We substitute in the values, the equilibrium concentrations that we have. X is for our two products. 0.1 minus x for our two reactants. And so now we get to um, do a little bit of algebra to help us solve our problem. We substitute in our k value. Um, and so now what we're going to need to do is to solve for x. Now you could be expanding these terms and collecting things together and we could be multiplying and cross multiplying, doing a range of different things. But one of the things, strategies we can use here is that we notice that both of these terms are squared, a squared term. 
So what that means is that we can take the square root of that whole fraction to simplify that out. Okay, and we can take square root of both sides, so square root of 0.64, um, and then that's going to get us closer. So we get 0.8 um, is equal to uh, x over 0.1 minus x, taking that square root. And then we now need to rearrange and solve for x. So we get rid of our denominator over here, we expand, collect like terms, and solve for x, which gives us a concentration of 0.044 moles per litre, which is our answer. Okay, so we've been able to use our equilibrium expression, the values that we collected from, or you used our ice table to collect, we've been able to then perform our calculations, use algebra to help us solve our, our problem and get a final answer. So we looked at some of the principles around calculating K EQ for an equilibrium. We looked at um, what is an initial change equilibrium or ice table. We looked at how we construct one and then looked at a couple of examples of how we can use one as a problem solving strategy to help us with our calculations about equilibrium. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.